In both SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric, you can take an existing part and use it as the basis for creating a new part. But the two CAD packages do it in slightly different ways. Let's take a look starting out in SOLIDWORKS. Here I have a part open. You can take a look in the Feature Design Manager tree and we can see all the different features that we have in here. Now I'm going to start off a brand new part. I will click on the New button. And here we have the new SOLIDWORKS document dialog box. Part is selected, so I will click OK. And now to get our existing part into this part, I will go to the Insert menu. And about halfway down, you can see the Part command. When I click on that, it will show all the different open documents that you have. And I only had one document open, so right now it is attached to my mouse. I can drop it into the graphics area. But you don't want to do that until you have configured the different options in here. So first off, if your part has multiple configurations, you can choose which one that you want to use. If the document was not open, well, you can use the Browse button in, in order to find it. Now we have a bunch of transfer options. So right now I have solid body selected. I can check surface bodies. We have axes, planes, cosmetic threads. Hey, I know I don't have any. Absorb sketches. This is turned off by default. I have it turned on because I turned it on during a previous operation. You can also check unabsorbed sketches. And now we get a warning. It says, hey, inserting both sketches and model dimensions may produce two sets of identical dimensions in the mirrored or derived part. Click OK to continue. And I'll click OK out of there. And here we have coordinate systems, model dimensions, because this is checked. That's why I got that warning if you check either absorbed sketches or unabsorbed sketches. And whole wizard data, hey, might as well check that. Body material and part material. Uh, the sheet metal options are grayed out because I do not have any sheet metal geometry in this particular model. And then we have the option to copy a DIM expert scheme, like if you had model-based definition in here. And here's an option to locate the part with move copy features. By default, this is turned off, but I have it turned on. And then you can choose to break the link to the original part. So changes to the original part will not be propagated to what's called the derived part in SOLIDWORKS. This is one, met one of three different methods in SOLIDWORKS of creating what's called a derived part. And the final option that we have in here is to propagate visual properties from the original part. For example, if special appearances were applied to different surfaces in the model. But everything looks good here. So again, if I left click, it'll go to place it into the target model, the derived part. In this particular situation, I'm getting a warning. It's telling me that the template used for making the derived part has different units of measurement than that of the base part. Hey, do you want to change the unit of measure of the derived part? Or do you want to leave the original units that you had in the derived part? Hey, let's go ahead and change it. And now, since I had the option checked to move the part, we are now in the Locate Part Property Manager. And you can pick a motion reference and then translate in X, Y, and Z. There's also a Rotate section in here as well. Alternatively, you can choose to define the location of the component using constraints. For example, if you already had existing geometry in your derived part, well, you could use coincident, parallel, perpendicular, and so on in order to define the location of the geometry that you're bringing in relative to your existing geometry. But I'll click back on the Translate Rotate button, and I'm just going to hit the check mark in here without actually moving it. And so now we have our geometry from the original model brought into our derived part. Hey, let me, uh, oops, wrong button. I want to turn off the display of planes. And looks like my axis is displayed. That's because of that option that I had 
turned on in order to bring those in as well. Hey, let's turn off the display of axes. But let's take a look in the feature design manager tree to see what we actually got. So we have our normal folders up here at the top. Then we have our default datum planes and the default coordinate system. Then we have the brake rotor and it's got the little line with the greater than sign that indicates that we have an external reference we did not break the link to the original part so now there is a reference between this particular part and the brake rotor original source part let's expand the arrow and then we can see that well we have solid bodies we checked that we wanted to bring in solid geometry that's what you see there and we also have the axis that we brought in and also we had planes checked so we're bringing in the original planes from the source model and we had the option checked for absorbed and unabsorbed sketches so that's why we see all these different sketches in the list in the folder and then we have this body move copy feature so again i said that i wanted to locate it relative to geometry in the new derived part and i didn't translate anything but again we do have that body move copy feature that's used to locate this geometry in the new part so again that's how you can get geometry in a new part using the insert part command now let's jump over to creo parametric and see their method of doing things. Okay, here I have a native Creo model open. You can take a look at the model tree. Let's create a brand new part and I will leave the file name the same. I will use my standard default template and then click the OK button. Probably the closest command to insert part on the SOLIDWORKS side would be the merge command in Creo Parametric. And you get to that from the get data overflow menu and you'll notice it's actually called merge slash inheritance and it's of the class called data sharing features i will click on it and the first thing i need to do is pick what model that i want to bring into this one i will use the open button and you can navigate to the part that you want to use i know that i still have it in my computer session so i'm just going to grab it right from there and then we get the component placement dialog box open. So this is where you want to locate this in your model. And if you're just starting out a brand new part, you will probably use the default constraint to locate the source model with the origin of the target model. And you'll notice that you have all your other standard Creo parametric constraints in here, like coincident or distance or angle offset and so on in order to define constraints if you wanted to locate this new model with respect to existing geometry in your current model. But again, I'm just going to use the default option and hit the check mark. And then if we take a look on the dashboard, here we have the operation type. These choices were added in Creo 7.0 with the addition of multi-body modeling. So you can add bodies or you could merge the geometry and add bodies and merge a lot of times that will result in the same result you'll notice that we have cut and intersect here they're both grayed out because i don't have any geometry in my model but you could use this imported geometry to cut away from existing geometry in your part or you could find the intersect between this geometry and what already exists in your part model and so let's take a look at the references tab here we have some of the options for what we want to include so you could copy the datum planes if you want to here's where you can copy the quilts and you can also include construction bodies if you go to the options tab you have even more things that you can include including things like appearance parameters layers materials and so on and another choice that we have here is how we want the copy geometry to update so this is like the option in solidworks where you could break the link to the original source model here you can choose automatic update that's the default in other words changes to the source model will automatically propagate 
to the target model if they're both in session and you regenerate. Here we have manual update. That's where you can choose when the target model updates with changes to the source model or no dependency. This is like breaking the link. Normally that is a one way trip, but there are certain sneaky ways in which you can change that. Anyhow, let's hit the check mark. And now we've brought the new geometry into our target model. Let me deselect the feature. You'll notice that we just have a single feature here. It is the add bodies feature. I'm going to edit definition. And I mentioned that, hey, we could change this to merge. It'll change the name of the feature, but the end result is going to be the same. Now, where you will see a big difference between Creo Parametric in SOLIDWORKS is if you use that inheritance option. I will edit to definition. And here on the dashboard, we have the merge slash inheritance button in order to toggle between the two different types of features. And now in this case, if I go to the options tab in here, we also have a varied items button. When I click on that, it will open up a dialog box that will allow me to make changes to entities from the source model in the target model, but everything else can be dependent on the original source model. So for example, you can change dimensions, features, references. We also have geometry tolerances, parameters and notes, and also symbols and surface finishes. So those are eight different kinds of items in a part model that you can change in the target model. So it's a way of doing a one-way associative merge, but making changes to the original model. It's really good when you have a source model that's kind of close to what you want to make, but you want to tweak it a little bit, but you also want to maintain dependence back to the original model in case the source model changes, you can update the target model. So it's really powerful functionality. But I will cancel out of there. Let's just hit the check mark. And in this case, we have our feature called an external inheritance feature. This time though, we have the arrow that we can expand. So we have access to all the original features from the source model. And if you were to make a change to one of these features, or if you were to suppress one of these features, it would end up adding those changes to that varied items table that I showed you a moment ago. But anyhow, that is the merge slash inheritance feature, which is kind of the same as inserting a part in SOLIDWORKS. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring that bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.